Hi, folks. Welcome to Follow the Leader, a podcast focused on telling character-driven stories the use of GMless tabletop games where we can all take the lead. You can find us on Tumblr at FDLCast and at FDLCast.com. We also have a Patreon at Patreon.com slash FTLCast. Today, we're playing Here We Used to Fly by Kurt Reffling and Ian Howard. For those of you who are new to this game, here are the basics. Here We Used to Fly is a tabletop role-playing game about children who visit a theme park and the adults they become exploring its abandoned grounds. It's about people and how they change. It's about discovery, play, and the bittersweet warmth of nostalgia. I'm Zach, and you can find me on Twitter at ObfuscatingGod, as well as Blue Sky and a few other places at Zachary Olson. And my pronouns are he, him. Playing with me today, we have Jade. Hi, I'm Jade. You can find me most places on the internet at jadeoxidrose, and I use they, them pronouns. And Corey. Hey folks, I'm Corey. You can find me on Twitter at Endless Musings and on co-host at Missy Nim. My pronouns are he, him. Our lines, things we absolutely do not want to see, are homophobia and transphobia, racism, sexism, anti-Semitism, violence against children and animals, sexual assault, domestic violence or intimate partner violence, unwanted pregnancy, plagues, and pandemics. Our veils, things we're fine with addressing but we'll just fade to black on, are steamy situations, graphic depictions of bodily harm, and terminal illness. Now that we've got all that, let's get started. Do you want me to read the poem? Do you have a, a cadence you think it would work at, Jade? Sure, I'll do it. Um, so this is a poem from the beginning of the book uh, for the listener. Just so it's, they know. Here we used to fly. It's, it's like the, the first thing you see when you open the book. No one counts the times the carousel turns. When the lights shut off, the riders are already gone. A memory is a kind of gift and a kind of loss. A token of time, polished until the filigree wears away. A tricky burr, hidden away and left to seed. Which one is true? Which one shimmers in the fading light? No one counts the cracks in a pane of broken glass. It's broken, and that's all there is to it. Or maybe, between the quiet light and the sweet dusty wind, we find something more beautiful than there was before. I feel like I need to like snap, but I don't want to do that. Microphone, <laughs> so I'm just voicing that right now. <laughs> Gotta make use of that English accent. Um, was it? I think on Dimension Twenty, just like why Jasper's there. It's just like you're here because you got a British accent and a whimsical, <laughs> whimsical last name. And I was like, yeah, that's a brand I can get in. Um, you know, fair. Before we get into character creation, we should probably. Um, establish what tone we want uh, as it says in the text just like a trip to the theme park some people might be looking for a more intense experience than others before you game begin to play take a moment minute to discuss the following questions do we want to focus on conflict between the characters how they support each other through challenges a mix of both or neither should our story be more about discovery loss or the range of experiences in between um, and the last question is what topics we want to avoid, but we have already addressed our lines and veils. Uh, the answers can shift throughout play, um, but as we like, what are we feeling tone-wise? It's, you know, more towards the end of the year. I think I, I, I joked a little bit about it, but I do have that kind of vibe where it's like, sun's going down early, kind of got that passage of time vibe going on in the brain. Where it's uh, uh, sitting and reflecting. So, like, 
I don't know if quieter and more reflective is necessarily all I'm here for, but that's definitely like top of mind somewhere in there. Sure. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you how do you both feel about? Yeah, I think that's good. I don't really have like a conflict in mind. Um, so having like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, like reflection. That's yeah. fair. Yeah. I also like this can be established for certain after we've sort of finished character creation, but like the act of what's brought these characters together as adults in this place that they used to go as children, I think sort of lends itself to like you don't just go to places like that. Like how many people go urban? Expo- like do urban exploration abandoned theme parks you know like yeah there's something that brought these people to this place at this point in their lives and it's like did they agree to this when they were kids why now why this place well i think i do know a question that should be asked then mm. if we're thinking about tones and otherwise where 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 are we what's Mm. What kind of what kind of joint is this before we even get into like the the hard details of what rides are around or what our people are like? What as in is it like middle and where of, in the world? Yeah, or are you talking like geographic, like middle of nowhere or near the seaside? When did the beach? yeah 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 like general like we are we coastal? Are we like middle middle of country situation? Like are there a lot of roads around? Is this kind of just out in the sticks? I mean, I'm happy to like lean in like theme parks. They're not strictly an American thing, obviously, yeah. mm-hmm. but they are a very American thing. Yeah, sure. Um, and I, I like the visual of, like, rather than it being, like, a beach town or whatever, there is, uh, maybe it's near-ish, a decent-sized town, but people would, like, it was good enough in the heyday that people would drive to it. It wasn't just mm-hmm. the locals that went there. Okay, but it's okay. not like sure. It's not like Disney level big or like Six Flags or whatever. But it's you know mm-hmm. decent. Okay, like a like a regional thing. Kinda. Yeah. What are you thinking, Zach? There, there was a little ca- um, amusement park uh, in my hometown in Phoenix when I grew up uh, called Castles and Coasters, which was literally just next to a shopping mall. There was a. Mm-hmm. It had like kind of the um, footprint of a large shopping mall in terms of size, which is not very big for a theme park, but it was cool. I loved it as a kid, and uh, it's certainly gotten run down the longer I've I've grown up. It used to be called Golf and Stuff. <laughs> huh. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. Let me see if I can find... Uh, which was, it was, it, it was kind of, it kind of weird, because um, it was just... In the middle of the city, uh, like you would be driving down the highway, uh, like through this through the city, and then suddenly there was a theme park for like you know of thirty seconds, and then you were back down to just normal downtown. Okay, like I think I get the vibe. So like landlocked is the word I'm using brain wise, but sort of like hmm. in the midst of mm-hmm. a sea of buildings, but also. Like, maybe two or three steel coasters at most. Like, maybe one large one and two, like, medium-sized ones. And then maybe, yeah. like, one or two wooden coasters or, like, an odd, like, water ride or something. Um, That's pretty much exact. I've just put, dropped a, a picture of Castles and Coasters so you can see, like, oh, yeah. truly it's, like, <laughs> they just dropped it in the middle of the city. Yeah. So it's, it like, was, right plopped there. Like, there's, you can see the interstate. <laughs> or the, uh, the yeah. It's, it's wild. It, That's I mean, wild. I loved it. Um, yeah, it had like all, you know, it had a good number of stuff and it had, I really loved it at a, um, one, it had like a whole castle like motif mm. on everything, but it also had a really cool like arcade castle okay. that nice. was like the entrance was, was an arcade that you uh, got okay. through, went through to go to the, uh, and there was like on one side there was a, there was mini golf and on the other side there was like the park rides yeah. and there's a big roller coaster in the middle, which was called, um, Kind of a kind of a incident. It was called Desert Storm. Jesus. <laughs> uh huh. Which I mean, on one side it's Arizona, so like we're yeah. in the desert. Yeah. yeah. But, but also, also that's the. But also, yeah. Um, hell of a hell of a place. That's a pretty big but also. <laughs> yeah. Um. God. One of the things it says to do 
um, with character creation is think about how the kids um, know each other. That's mm-hmm. fair, yeah. yeah um, I think I can... If we're talking about like a park that's like very close town, I like mm-hmm. the notion of it being, especially if we're going to keep the time period sort of vague, the place where kids could cycle to. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. Not a short bike ride, but you could, and like maybe they had like summer passes or season passes and like you would just go mm-hmm. every weekend while it was there. Mm-hmm. So. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah, I can I can see that vibe. Kind of that place too where like maybe not even, or maybe even like sort of as the off season went by, you get some of the ones that actually still hang out there. Not like dead of winter necessarily, but sure. when people aren't around in fall or when they're there like early spring. Yeah. Sweet. We got to do a mini golf course, though. Now that I've seen this, this uh, very, very nice uh, thematic map, uh, this isometric thing. Yeah, castles and coasters. Uh, we are not. We are not obliged to stick to just the. Uh, we can come up with our own attractions. Yeah. So I want. I want blue water. You know what I mean? Like. Nope. Just unearthly. <laughs> like should uh, not drink. Uh, oh, La- Laguna Blue. Yeah, yeah. Okay. should not approach like Homestar Runner parody Blue Water. Gotcha. Yeah, um, I will also Castles and Cultures in Phoenix was also like next to a mall called Metro Center, um, which I am remembering now. They demolished one of the like facades of it, and it left it destroyed for like years. So like you would go <laughs> in like the mid two thousands. And it's like, oh, yeah, this is Metro Center. It was like super hopping in the 80s and 90s, but part of it is just collapsed and it was open still. <laughs> That's wacky. It was just that you couldn't go through that entrance that, and the inside part of it, that store was like just shut off. Um, yeah. It, now that I, when I think about it, it's crazy. <laughs> just, you know, Fuck open air. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah. do we like the idea of like being neighborhood kids like or did we maybe meet up at the park or at oh, the attraction? Man. That could be cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah I like, think, like we're from like different parts of the town or whatever, but we would meet up at the park. Not even necessarily mm-hmm. intentionally, but like when you just find people you see all the time and you're like, oh, hey, you want to hang out? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like maybe it was like parents group kind of, you know. When you're watching children, it's always more effective to do it with, uh, with people and they kind of meet up and hang out and then it just becomes a trend, right? So, yeah, like, uh, like, um, there was something that, that was like easier to do with three kids and like, so that we each wanted to do individually. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and so we got like kind of paired together and then it just kind of stuck. Yeah. Love that. All yeah. right. Okay. Let's, uh, Let's get into this character creation then. Um, what's cool about the playbooks in Here We Used to Fly is they're very open ended. They're literally just labeled with adjectives that describe how your character interacts with the people around them and give you sort of questions to bounce off. But they're there to shape how you think about them as a person rather than prescribing like specific moves. Um, a fun detail with this game is also like they encourage you to. Unlike some systems, or like it works better if everybody has a different thing, which to be fair, we ended up doing, but you don't have to. It talks about how one person's curiosity doesn't necessarily look like anybody else's, and what it means to be an angry child is a different thing from being an angry adult. So, yeah, that's the nice thing too. Like the the adjectives that they provide and the questions that go along with them, it's actually quite a broad range of. Mm-hmm. different feelings or like general motives too. like you don't just get like the more generic spectrum like they give you some pretty uh strong words to go off of like i i, I went personally with like passionate and spacey for the couple that i had but like going down the list like affectionate anxious controlling like weird they give you quite a lot to go off of in terms of vibes for even just like that that first brush with like what what am I thinking? What's my main thing as 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 either of these arrows of person? Sure. Zach, you want to go first? Yeah, let's see. Let's hear it. Oh yes. Um. Okay. So what? Uh, how do we want to? I was th- coming up with a name mm-hmm. uh, and kind of zoned out. Um. um what? How, what should I? How, how do you think I should go through? 
uh, let's uh, say what our child playbook is, um, and then we can answer the questions about it, and then we can do follow-up questions for each other. We'll loop round, and then we'll go back, do the adult playbooks, and then we'll introduce our characters by name. Cool. Which is how it suggests uh, in the book. Nice. All right, sounds good. All right, so I am Isaiah Sorensen. Pronounce he him. As a kid, he was kind of scrawny and fidgety, and he got a bowl cut. His child uh, playbook is anxious, nervous, fidgety, easily overwhelmed, or simply hiding a deep fear that you'd hate for the world to discover. Um, so should I go through my questions? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, and answer them as we go. See what you see what we learn about Isaiah. So Isaiah, what stresses you out more than anything else? Um, I think what I've been, what I picked, which is ironic, is noisy crowds. <laughs> um, but it's like you know, big crowds, and particularly like being alone in a big crowd. Mm. Um, having like p- kind of people around can like kind of ground him a little bit but like if he's ever like cut off uh he like gets real uh really um fidgety and, and like like spooked yeah uh which like in a theme park is an amusement park is not the best yeah, um, yeah. but it's a smaller theme park uh, amusement park so it's I don't know why I keep think, calling it a theme park instead of an amusement park. Those are like side by side concepts, but they're not the same thing. It's like sort of interchangeable a little bit, but. Mm-hmm. Um, second question is what calms you down when you're panicking? Um, and I think it would be fun for it to be a, like a trinket you always carry. Like he's got like a little um, Superman keychain. Hmm. Mm. That he like keeps in his pocket, and that he can like like put his finger through the 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 key ring and like hold on to, because uh, Superman is cool and is there and Hell he's yeah. like not scared of nothing. Um, third question is what impacts you most when the uh, anxiety hits? Um, it's dizzy and disoriented. It's like everything kind of blurs together, and he has a hard time like differentiating people and shapes and stuff he like it's like the whole world kind of just becomes a blur just pulling on some personal uh experience and the last one is what part feature do you associate with a particular moment of worry and i i think from what i'm doing i think the hall of mirrors Mm. Um, which is, I don't think it's on the list, but like, you know, we can, we can add stuff as we like. And the Hall of Mirrors is a thing at every um, carnival I've ever been to at the very least. Uh, I don't know if y'all are familiar with, with going into those, but uh, it kind of can be in a big crowd. You know, it's like, it's like being in a big crowd because the whole, <laughs> everyone is everywhere. And I think maybe like one particular time that was bad was being in a hall of mirrors that was kind of crowded and also getting like um getting like separated from the group and that was just a bad time mm. okay that is such a mood yeah i have a particular memory of getting lost in like a toys r us once <laughs> Mm-hmm. As a small child, and uh, like all of these things, I, I totally relate to and understand. <laughs> it's, mm-hmm. it's very particular. Mm-hmm. Shall I go next? Yeah, uh, Zach, can you put your answers into the G doc so we can refer back to them if we need to? Oh, sure, 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 sure. 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 So I have Martha Metty Oswald, uh, she/her pronouns, um, as a child. He's got wavy brown hair, worn long and free in the early days, along with breezy clothes that tend to get caught on things as she walks about, um, but which whirl around in moments of excitement, kind of become like a kaleidoscope of color. Um, the child playbook I've got for her is passionate. You have big feelings, love, hate, joy, fear. It's all there, swirled up together like a tilt-a-whirl. 
for the questions that I have, the first one I've got is, how do you feel about your passion? I think in this case, it's sort of an, what's the word I'm looking for? Like an unyielding one. She isn't really registered that her experience isn't universal. Just kind of assuming that everyone is approaching things from the same level that she is and that everyone is equally as into it as she is. <laughs> like Zach said, drawing from personal experience, very big things where it's like, yeah, you know, this thing is super cool. Why, you know, of course everyone would like it just as much and be as into it and wouldn't mind if I talk about this for like 10, 15, 20, half an hour, an hour time. Um, when's the last time that she cried? Ooh, I would say for this one. <laughs> And I, I like the answers that they provide here. It, it's sort of, they're really good at like illustrating scale in these cases. It, it paints a picture. <laughs> it's, it's so good because I just want to call all of these out in general. Um, when it states the last time that the, the passionate playbook cried in general, all of them start with yesterday. <laughs> and Incredible. I do love that. So uh, in particular, I'm going to go for yesterday when you saw a really cute dog. Like, just overwhelmed by, like, small things coming through and just, like, existing in a very particular way that just are there to admire. Um, what response to her emotions gets uh, on her nerves in this case? I would say a lack of response is probably the best here. Like, when when people seem out of phase or disengaged or otherwise not, like, on level, per se... Um, I think she tends to get like agitated or otherwise amped up about what's happening. And then, uh, which park feature have you always been first in line for? So when I was a kid, and I'm going to draw again from this one, there were a couple of parks that I headed to constantly and folks may be familiar with these, um, on the East coast. So there's two in particular that I think of, um, there's Bush gardens down more towards like the, the, Tidewater region of Virginia. And then up in Pennsylvania, there's Hershey Park. So take from that what you will. Um, those ones, there are always a, a pair of wooden coasters. And I think this is the same for uh, Medi here. Like one of those old, like rattling things where um, like the construction's constrained and you can't really do like wild things that you can do nowadays with like the full steel, like hanging down or. Um, standing coasters like the very classic like you sit in a big metal car and you get whirled around and it's not like loop-de-loop -loop wild but it still goes at speed right um, I think it's that kind of thing like a coaster which had a big old sea serpent as the theme for like the cars that you sat in and every time they ever went to this park um, she would always run to their first early in the morning just like make sure that she could get onto like the first one of the day uh really kind of take in the morning dew and the uh the, the, the brisker air or the warmer air depending on the season and the the view over the park at that time so i don't know what, what we'll call that yet but yeah i think that's where she would have uh would have gone first necessarily so that's medi as a child and i think i'll Pass that on to Jade now to close out for the kid playbooks. Sure. Um, so my character is Avery Lewis. Uh, as a kid, using she, her pronouns. Look, is reddish brown hair in a buzz cut, uh, dressed in oversized clothes, like from the Goodwill kind of a vibe. So, um, but also like very genderless sort of shapeless clothes. Like big my brain has defaulted to this happening in the 90s. It does not have to, but that's the vibe I'm picturing. Like, very, like, ripped jeans, T-shirts, flannel shirts over the top. Like, that kind of skater, grungy sort of aesthetic. Um, and the playbook I have chosen for Avery as a kid is Frank. You take pride in being brutally honest. You're blunt and candid, sometimes at the expense of people's feelings. Um, why am I so committed to being honest? Um, 
I really liked the vibe of overcorrecting for your parents' behavior. Um, I think Avery has some issues <laughs> with the folks. So, um, and it's not so much like, I think it's just like, it's sick of being around people who are so like people pleasy and just like, lies of mission lying through their teeth but also just like everything feels so false and they she hates it it, it drives her up the wall um and so rather than being polite and just like oh well you know that's fine it's just like no fuck that actually i hate this i hate you that looks ugly fucking deal with it i don't think she sets out to be mean even if that is the byproduct of, by, by product of it sometimes. In what way has your bluntness actually been helpful? I like the answer of your friends that see you as a trusted source of advice. Um, almost as much as I like, if we're being honest, it's almost always not. <laughs> but... I think the truth of it lies somewhere in the team. Like, you can trust Avery to tell you the truth, but if you aren't prepared to hear it, don't ask. Mm. Um, so it's going to be, like, good, honest advice, like, if that's what people need. But, yeah, we'll not, like, tiptoe around feelings. If somebody says, hey, does this make me look dumb? It's just like, you do look like a clown. <laughs> What you want to be a lie about it? Like that's that's not their vibe. So the last person I lied to, I'm absolutely going to use an authority to protect someone. Cause this is a kid who absolutely lied to cops and to like park security. Um no question. Just like what A cab flipping the bird just like what are you gonna do about it arrest me i'm 14 fuck off <laughs> incredible <laughs> so um maybe if this is um because I, I assume these are like what's the last person or what's the last instance of this it does refer to like as a child as opposed to this person as an adult yeah mm. so in which case uh, maybe it was somebody another kid at the park who uh, snuck in without paying um, or were, were cheating um, a wristband system or whatever. But yeah, it's like an act of kindness that maybe people wouldn't expect from this mm -hmm. kid. So Yeah, like get you can enjoy what you want to enjoy. Don't let them hold you out of it. Yeah. Um, which park feature will you argue for hours is objectively the best i think what are you guys what we've had the hall of mirrors mentioned and what did uh you pick for medi Corey? like an old serpent wooden coaster thing okay 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 mm -hmm. hmm I'm torn. I'm getting between... the vibe of like. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was gonna. It's either the vibe of the. I think it's either the arcade or like Carnival Alley, like games of some mm. description. Hell yeah. Um. Something you can win at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Win yeah. at, yeah. Um, I just it's occurred to me that something uh has immediately clicked for me about Avery as an adult. Um, let's say Carnival Alley. So I'm assuming nice. that is going to be like games as opposed to yeah. So, yeah, flashing lights and shiny prizes. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh yeah, so Carnival Alley. And I think it part of it is like it is something you can win at. You can walk mm -hmm. away and go, hey, I did this. So Yeah. Yeah, I get that. Like a definite sort of like you did something and you got a result and that proves mm -hmm. something about the world. Like, mm -hmm. you know, whether or not it's rigged, you're managed, you're able to beat it to find 
I'm way past that. Yeah. Cool. Okay, okay, okay. Wanna loop back up to the top? Yeah, I think it's time for adult time. That mm, phrasing. Oh, you know, fair. <laughs> <laughs> you got uh, me there. Mm. Uh, all right, so it's me again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Isaiah, anxious kid, uh, adult playbook is uh, kind. Being scared of stuff a lot can, with the right influences, lead to being somebody who is aware and like considerate of how other people feel. And that and that wants you to and like wanting to be able to, you know, kind of assuage those feelings in other people that you didn't have as much help with as yourself. First question is who taught you to be caring? And one of the answers is therapy, if you're being honest, which I'm gonna take. <laughs> yeah. It really really helped later on in life. Um oh my look, by the way, um I was a scrawny kid, but he's filled out as an adult. So he's nice and and um you know, broad and round in in, in the right places and the comforting places and like not as scared to take up space. Mm-hmm. Uh warm eyes and a man bun. He's got this long kind of wavy hair that he ties up in a very you know, kind of half messy, but like in a in a fun way. Um, what small act of goodness continues to inspire you? This I'm I'm not as uh, sure about. I think maybe it was something that that one or both of y'all did when I was a kid that like kind of mm. helped set me off on this path. Um, I mean, what do y'all think? What if it is like a riff on when they waited with you in the pouring rain, like with him having this anxiety about being alone? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And just like, yeah. and maybe knowing that they were going to get in trouble and they stayed anyway. Mm-hmm. Like, just that willingness to put themselves out and not ever like ask for anything in return. Mm hmm. Hell yeah. Um, fantastic. And then uh, when was your kindness taken advantage of? I think the like it these days, because I wasn't I wasn't like this outwardly and like actively kind as a kid. I as an adult, I've been better at being like um kind you know, kind doesn't mean like a pushover credulous yeah or a pushover Mm -hmm. i think i managed to like kind of get this this vibe of myself after the the period of time where i could have been like taken advantage of is past Mm. yeah um it's like yeah i mean yeah i got i got pushed around a lot as a kid but not because i was too nice it was because i was scared of stuff um Mm -hmm. and now i'm not scared of stuff anymore and also you can't push me around (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, there's always still, like, even if the underlying anxiety behind it has gone away, there's still that carefulness about it, right? Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I, I try, I'm canny. I try, or at least I try to be. I'm not, um, I'm not overly credulous or, like, naive yeah, about And you're discerning. It. Mm-hmm. Like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, and it's, a, uh, what park feature are you always excited to share with people? Um, and I think that I was a big fan of the, um, of like the Tilt-A-Whirl. Mm. Mm. Um, one of those like spinning things where you get pushed up against the wall. Mm-hmm. Um, and it kind of, it, like it, it almost like that pressure of being like held was a little comforting and like you're next to everybody. You're not like all clumped together. Everyone's like kind of spread out, but you can like reach out and touch someone else's hand. So you're not too far away, but 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 you're also like just the the kind of woo, 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 um, kinetic like force of it was always very appealing to me. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what I don't know which one of the um, the existing 
uh, things that would be. Uh, we can riff on one of them when we get there. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, yeah. We'll put a figure. There's out. a lot of cool ones in mm-hmm. here. Yeah, there really are. Like, I like skipping ahead mildly. There's they've provided quite a lot of uh, inspiration for potential mm-hmm. rides or attractions that are there, as well as good questions that go along with it. So, if someone wanted to. Um, apply some of their own imagination or um, fill in for potential uh, experiences to draw from. It's, I think it gives a pretty good like template or outline for folks to fill out their thoughts mm-hmm. and their questions and how they want to play around those particular rides or attractions as they stand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'll, I'll pick up in the meanwhile. So Medi, as an adult, um, Still actually has some of the same general fashions. In later days, she's cut her hair down to be more shoulder length. So it's not all wild and all over the place necessarily. She does still have the same style of clothes, but the colors for them are a lot more subdued. And the way that I put it is, as opposed to where they roll around when she was a kid, um, when she sort of applied the force. Now these days, it's more that they're subdued and fluttering with the winds. Um, The playbook that I chose for her as an adult would be Spacey. The byline for this is, you're always a little bit in a daydream. So, more, uh, as as a kid, I think, part of it's you, you get your energy out, right? You sort of run all up against the limits and find ways in which people are willing to bend and, and other ways that they don't necessarily get along or agree. And I think a lot of doing this early on and a lot of what she's encountered has led her to be more measured and more inward. Um, like some of it was the energy was spent, some of it was just that the energy was rejected. So um, these days she's a little more careful about sharing that inner universe. Um, the questions as provided, the first one here is, what are you thinking about in there, really? I think in this case, it's, ooh, because there's some potent ones here from what they list from like a fantasy world to recent events to nothing at all, like no thoughts, head empty. Uh, I think in this case, it would be kind of like when you rethink your life, right? And you sort of relive moments of it in uh, across whenever you're kind of walking about places, especially like this one, an old spot where you have a lot of memories built in. It's it's almost like, how would I record this as like a documentary or like a, a series of vignettes, right? Like mm-hmm. for each of these spots, how do I remember it as it was before? How am I thinking about it now? I think she's thinking about how she would record what her thoughts are on all these places as she passes by. So, documenting the park as it was before and as it is now. Very cool. Uh, Next up is, who gets the most frustrated with your spaciness? Um, I think in this case, it actually really is no one. I think a lot of people saw what she was before. Um, and have kind of accepted in, in sort of that way that age provides uh, for better or for worse. Like, oh, she probably just got it all out of her system. And that's just nowadays she's got more time or more experience and she's not acting out as much necessarily. Uh, after that, what makes you feel most there and fully immersed in the present moment? Um, I think in this case, like, even if she doesn't necessarily show it, it is still... Um, the, and one of the answers here, adrenaline, like those situations where it's pulse pounding or you're still experiencing those old, um, the rush, right? Where, uh, reservations kind of melt away or thoughtfulness is replaced by feeling and, um, by with, but being within something, right? Being there, experiencing it, not not being burdened necessarily by how you might look at this from the outside of the moment. And lastly for this one, it's uh, which park feature have you idly daydreamed about for years? So I think she was never quite able to conquer this uh, early on. Um, There's probably like this big, and again, drawing from personal one, like one of those upside down coasters, you know, where you're sitting in there and you're hanging from um, the bottom of the track mm-hmm. and it whirls you all over the place and you got like this big harness and stuff and your feet are dangling. 
I think she's always wanted to uh, wanted to ride that as a kid, but kind of never really built up all of the courage to get into it. Mm. Um, and then as the time kind of passed, she never like whatever happened in the interim, if they started going less or if she just never really got around to it, that's kind of been like, not necessarily a lingering regret, but kind of a dream of like, oh, what if, you know, what would that feeling be like? Uh, free floating of swinging all here and there and, and really experiencing it. So it'll be a, a steel hanging coaster with tight loops and sheer drops. Ooh. And I think that's Medi as an adult. So how's Avery? Uh, Avery as an adult. I think it's still, uh, the hair is not a buzz cut, but still worn pretty closely cropped. You can see that there's a curl to it, but not much else. There is some texture there. Bit of an eccentric dresser. Um, like loud prints, big statement accessories, like having fun. As a kid, the clothes were very like, don't look at me, don't pay attention to me, and hiding away in them. As an adult, it's similar sort of baggy and loose and with movement, but it's more like, hey, look at this. Um, just like, if you're going to stare at me, I'm going to tell you about this really cool thing I have. Uh, mm. Like mismatched uh, Chuck Taylors, um, that kind of vibe. That is a vibe. Uh, they them pronouns as an adult and has the playbook um, unsur unsurprisingly perhaps given it's me playing them of weird when people meet you they find you strange there's something about your habits or mannerisms that give people pause um, and the first question is you know you're a little different but weird isn't the word you would use how do you see yourself um, and of these I think I'm going to go with focused uh, you have your interests and know what you like. Uh, cards on the table. Uh, Avery's autistic. Um, mm -hmm. Shocking. Mm. I know. Um, but has sort of gotten comfortable. Just like, yeah, I have these things I like. I will tell you about these things I like. Uh, you don't like them? Don't listen. I have decided, uh, this was the realisation that they have, they're a YouTuber. But this is like early YouTube mm -hmm. days. <laughs> Mm. Um, oh, but yeah. definitely um, like and we'll talk about like theme parks and how to win at carnival games and stuff like that I think that old hyperfixation is absolutely still there and yeah it doesn't matter like to be fair I think they do kind of own the label of being weird um, I'm weird <laughs> Betty <I'm>, you <laughs> ever see me without this hat weird um fuck the writing in riverdale actually but yeah what incident cemented your reputation as an oddball i think this was something that went viral <laughs> i think this was a rant about something that absolutely got um shared around and maybe not like i think people saw the enthusiasm but it was still like mm, this person's really intense <laughs> Like, I didn't think it was that possible to have this strong opinion on kettle corn, and yet, apparently people do. I don't think it was necessarily about kettle corn. Uh, that was just the first thing that came into my head. Um, mm. But definitely just like, um, an in rather than a rant, I suppose an impassioned speech that went viral online. I can easily see a situation where someone's talking about, like, the old, like, like a defunct land situation, right? Like mm -hmm, them going yeah. into the handwich kind of thing. Like, oh, what was the process behind this? How did it change? Why is it bad mm. now? <laughs> I'm going to put an impassioned speech about a seemingly inconsequential thing. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Um, in spite of your oddities, what do your friends love about you? Uh, the options that the text offers are you're an amazing listener, things are always unpredictable with you around, you're the glue that keeps the group together, um, or, you know, the eternal other. Mm -hmm. I think it's not quite that things are unpredictable, but it's more 
they bring an energy and an enthusiasm and this intensity that can be a little can be off-putting but it's more like you know sometimes you just need that friend who's willing to get shit done and make decisions when nobody else can decide it's sort of that that willingness to go okay we'll do this and it's that sort of confidence i suppose oh yeah 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 like you sort of when you're around them you kind of tuck in and you end up along for the ride, but not in a bad way. You just experience things that you wouldn't have otherwise, decisions you wouldn't have made. Imagine, oh, like a mum friend, but it's definitely like the eccentric aunt, a friend yeah. or the weird uncle. Like, they're absolutely looking after everybody, which might seem kind of condescending, except that buck wild shit tends to <laughs> happen. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just put the weird uncle friend. Like, you're unsure about it at first, but afterwards you're always like, actually, yeah, that was great. Why didn't I do that before? They absolutely look after people. Like, no man gets left behind kind of vibes. Oh, yeah. um, and which park feature has felt like a strange second home to you? Um, I've gone back and forth on this a couple of times, seeing what uh, the book had to offer up. I think I'm going to go with like the, like, it's described that it's like the playtime theater, but it's, it is like the theater space where they have like live entertainment, but the food there was always bizarre and it was always the right sort of temperature. And because a lot of it was aimed at maybe slightly younger kids, you didn't need to worry about asshole older kids there was a safeness or a feeling of safety there mm -hmm. that was comforting so got some fun tags i look forward to going to this attraction later in the game yeah um, but yeah so that's that is there anything else we want to establish about our characters uh, any questions we have for each other before we dive in? Oh, oh. Oh, how old are we? Yeah, I think that's a good place to start with. I'm assuming as adults in this case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm imagining like 13, 14, 15 ish. Yeah. Especially if it was like more than one weekend, more than one summer at this at this theme park or at this amusement park. Especially getting to like hang around it alone, yeah. Too, like definitely more teen. Yeah, but are we thinking like, are we thinking like the losers club? So like, what mid th late thirties, like older, older, or are we can feeling more like it's been ten years since they were last here. Like, what do we like the vibe of more? I'd say like early to mid thirties. How do y'all feel? Sure. Yeah, I reckon I can manage that. Just, just, just barely crested over. Like you're starting to get back into like how, how is that now? Kind of. I vibes. thought you were gonna say you're just starting to get back pain. Just like, yep, <laughs> that, that's your thing. <laughs> that's the secret vibe. Yeah. Uh -huh. cool, <laughs> if cool. I rode this, would I throw out a disc? Hmm. Mm. That's probably a little further along than early thirty, actually. Mm. <laughs> just you wait. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right. So we've done all of the questions. Uh, we've established our names and pronouns. Um, the last question that we need to answer before we can be begin play is, who idea was it to come back to this park? Ah, a strong question indeed. I suppose before that, you're like, have, I assume we've kept in contact. Or yeah. have we? Oh, dang, you know, that's a good point. I would say, I think so. Like, I would think so. Maybe not necessarily. Sure, I just didn't want to assume. Not like in each other's mm. pockets, like maybe they've moved to different places, but it's like... Yeah, has anyone like done a big move across the country kind of thing? Or is this all sort of like, some people went to like, uh, one of us went to like State University, the other two like went to the workforce. We're all kind of hanging mm. around nearby. Yeah, like, like... The, I like that as a vibe. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, yeah. One one went away to somewhere a little bigger and then they came back around or Yeah, it's more like 
that that gentle sort of drifting apart. There's no bad yeah. feelings or anything like that. And maybe just like, oh, you periodically like we'll have a exchange online, or if you run into each other in like the supermarket, oh, I'm visiting my parents. How are you go for a drink? I'll see you next time I'm in town. Kind of vibe, like friendly, but maybe not like besties. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I if gotcha. people like that, I want to assume. I think that's good. Also, like not all three. That not all the relationships have to be equivalent levels of closeness either. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, um, but yeah. So, whose idea was it to come back? Well, one of us is a YouTuber focused on amusement parks. Yeah. True. Yeah. Very, very much the case. Another one of us is focused on t- is thinking about how to document this thing. So it could be like. Well, oh man! Maybe the two, the, the two of you have continued like worked together, and like reached out to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I get the vibe. Like your yeah. your thing went viral, and then Medi yeah. saw it and was like, "Hang on, actually, you know what? Yeah, maybe it was talking about this one specific snack that you could only get at this theme park. Find no recipes anywhere." Um, like caught up, just like you know what? We should go back and walk around. Like, didn't they shut that place down? Like. Eight years, like ten years ago, fifteen years ago. So it's like, yeah, yeah, and maybe someone left like an old manual somewhere. And then it's just like, oh, we need to call Azaya. Like, if we're gonna go, yeah, 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 yeah. God, imagine somebody you were like friends with in like your freshman year of high school calling you up when you're like twenty years later, being like, yo, you know, we used to go to this theme park a lot as kids. I'm gonna break in there at the weekend. Do you want to come? <laughs> <laughs> casual b and a like in the newspapers you can see like oh the city's talking about like paving this over and making it into like a live work or something you know maybe that is so it you, as well you, you like, gotta yeah. go see it now yeah there won't be another chance to go back yeah fun all right uh so the game has a looping structure we'll choose an attraction from the list in the book um, for each location, we'll spend some time discussing what it was like in the park's heyday, then play out scenes as children. After that, the game flashes forward in time to imagine the attraction after the park has been abandoned. Now the players run through scenes as their adult characters, exploring the same locations as ruins. After the last scene, pick a new location and flash back to childhood and start the circle again. Touch base after each attraction. Um, and yeah. The book suggests three to five. But uh, it's whatever we want to do. Yeah, yeah, and we don't necessarily have to do one per. If we got, if we get a vibe with each one, we can stick around for longer or wherever it needs to. Yeah, I think I think the uh, idea is that if you wanted to, everybody could do a scene as yep. a child and as an adult for each attraction, depending on how long the scenes tend to be, because not everybody has to be in every scene and whatever. So it's, it's it's like very free form in that way. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Oh, what's our first ride? Oh. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Has anybody spotted one they want, or are we just going to throw this to Zach because I put his name first in the journal in the document? <laughs> <laughs> the best selection, an arbitrary one. Um, I know the two rides that I've uh, aligned with here. I think we all have ours set out. So. Hmm. Mm. So, okay, so we're here, it's frame-wise, we're here as adults to do a retrospective on this park. Do you want to name the park? Probably should. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, man. I'm trying to think of, like, park names, and the problem is, there's this very one particular one that someone told me about once that's just stuck right in the brain lobes, and I can't remember what it's called. Yeah. I mean, when I when I think of the ones I know in the UK, and to be fair, I don't know all of them. Uh, there's Chessington World of Adventures, that's named after the town it's in. There's Thorpe mm-hmm. Park, there's Alton Towers, uh, there's Dreamland, uh, and there's probably a bunch of other smaller ones that I don't know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The one I'm thinking of is, it's called the Ocean Breeze Water Park, if anyone's familiar. It's... Um... In particular, the reason why it's in my brain is because they have a massive, like, uh, gorilla in, like, a Hawaiian shirt and, like, swim trunks 
called Humongous. What a incredible, <laughs> incredible. Someone told me about that, and I've just never forgotten. <laughs> I, I do like the idea of a place with um a mascot like that yeah um, like... one of the the rides is called the dragon um one of the is, is called the dragon and i just okay okay i like the idea of something around like maybe i don't know well i know i said that there was a, a theme like a sea serpent situation yeah um mm -hmm. oblique reference i'm drawing from the loch ness monster at, at bush gardens in that one so yeah. Sure, sure. We could do. I mean, we could have like a like a like a medieval aesthetic. Yeah, Hell yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Can't like Canterbury Kingdom. Oh, ooh, that's or, good. Or riff on Camelot or something. Oh yeah, yeah. That makes that makes more sense. I was just thinking of like the Canterbury Tales. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, Camelot. Uh, you could call, like the court at Camelot. Yeah. Or, or something. Mm -hmm. I'm digging it. I'm liking the alliteration quite a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay, court of Camelot. Yeah, and like the court itself is like a like you know one. There's like a keep mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thinking about like how big like Ren Fairs are in the states as well. Mm -hmm. That's also good then because like you got your hub area. Yeah, it's like a it's like a combination Ren Fair, yep. um, which means that you it was some weird like medieval. Um, fair food like fusion mm -hmm. that you got that that, that your your speech was about mm -hmm. it's like you're telling me you you've never had fried turkey legs mm -hmm. uh, or something like that yeah it's like a maple butter glazed deep fried turkey leg you've never had it. oh yeah there we go mm -hmm. maple butter fried turkey legs patent pending just the right mix of like big and way too much and yeah. also weird I also just really yeah. like that this place, like, uh, was it Court of Camelot or Camelot Court? Uh, I think Court of Camelot sounds good. Yeah. That they have a dragon mask. I was just like, there is no dragon in any of the off. <laughs> Kids like dragons. Kids love dragons. Kids love dragons. Yeah. Um, you can you can <laughs> you can grail size a your, a drink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fucking yeah. Uh, Fit for the entire yeah. round table. <laughs> God. Yeah. Oh my god. They they definitely have those big like plastic like collectible cups that are the holy grail. Oh, and they absolutely have a sword in the stone somewhere central. It likes like welded in and is like embedded in concrete. Mm -hmm. No one's getting it out, but you can get like it's a photo op spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Just like uh just like a Disney uh, the Disneyland in California. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, the fantasy land in in the, the in Disneyland has a um has a sword in the stone. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think I have a photo somewhere of me like trying Fuck to pull yeah. it. Nice, nice. So I love the idea that we see to just other we have the frames like it's not long after sun up. Um, mm -hmm. It's like we see a shot from behind these three figures walking towards the like padlocked gates. Of this theme park, and as the sun gets brighter or seems to get brighter, uh, we have like a tilt shift or whatever, and it moves to the three as children moving into the park as we head to our first attraction. Oh yeah. Okay, where where are we headed? What's the what's the first thing we're doing? What's what's near the entrance? Oh, what is near the entrance? Like, it's kind of like your castle, like the castle gates, right? That would have to be where you get received. Is there like a moat? Is there a moat around this entrance? Is the moat a lazy river? Oh, there yes. There is a river ride as well. Double yes. Yeah. Okay, okay. So like people are drifting like under the moat, under like the the, the bridge. It, mm -hmm. When you head into the portcullis, you can see them kind of going by. Yeah, there's a lot of inner tubes that look like um, crocodiles. Nice. Very good. Nice, nice, nice. And I love how that is so wonderfully off-putting, because I'm just thinking like every pool I've ever been to in the summer, especially that smell of warm, chlorinated water is, uh but just as a vibe. Mm -hmm. like, oh, it's like drifting up, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So we, yeah. 
So actually, yeah, so we'll, we'll pick the river right as the first one because that's the first one we see as we enter. Yeah. Okay, so we've got to pick three features. I think the view from the top is definitely one that we see because it's like you cross the moat um, to get in. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's 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 kind of funny because there's like the there's the actual park grounds and then there's the moat and then there's the like the cl- the um, entrance because mm-hmm. they can't have it outside the park. Obviously grounds. not. Yeah. No. Which means it's not really a moat, but it's like it looks like a moat. Uh, it's it's styled as a moat. Mm-hmm. So yeah, the view. The, I think the view from the top is is one where like you can look down. It's kind of it's kind of recessed. Every so often, there's like um, ladders uh, uh, recessed into the moats, like um, walls, so that people can like staff members can like come in and like get stuff and like help people. Mm-hmm. Um, there are lifeguards here and there. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's they they've got like little like page uniforms. Uh-huh. Um Oh, it's like but a, like also the the big orange lifeguard like floaties. I was going to oh, say man. what if they're like um wetsuits but patterned to mm-hmm. look like those pages sort of costumes. Yeah. So they yeah, can just yeah, yeah. be in the water as they need to be mm-hmm. just like wandering around. And the big yeah. pool floaties like... are done like kite shields. Mhm. Incredible. I am so bad. This place is not. Real. <laughs> I was gonna say, damn! We're, I we're think I just want to go here. Actually, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's run down now. Unfortunately, yeah, yeah. they yeah. closed it down. Um. So when we were kids, who brought their own inner tube to ride the river ride or to ride the moat? Hmm. Hmm. I. I'm not sure. Ch- I, I. I'm like. Half between, like, maybe I did, but also, like, but then I would be carrying a, a tube around all day, and that seems like it would be even more anxiety-inducing. Mm-hmm. I think uh, Mehdi went out to, like, the mall nearby and got, like, a big sword floaty. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. And we called it Excalibur because it was mm-hmm. stupid and massive and huge. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also really super effective and I think you know like most people when they're in like a river ride or like a lazy river or whatever they just kind of hang back and they're chilled out I please think, tell me she acted out pretending to drown I, well, no I think she tried to I think she actually did because she was trying to balance on top of it oh my god like, like surf it like a surf it yeah like surfing it down the lazy river that mm, I love her. This perfect child. <laughs> it's not child. how that works. <laughs> it's not how it works at all. Just trying to be Lady of the Lake. Yeah. Like, mm. <laughs> Ding. <laughs> uh, that got me funny. Nice one. You're welcome. Mm. <laughs> uh, and who always fell in the river? Hmm. It's it, it's easy to fall into. I mean, there's railings, but, like, Mm -hmm. they're not great railings. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm happy to have it be Avery if you think Isaiah would be too careful. Mm -hmm. Be too scared of falling in, so would make a point to be more careful. Yeah, I think Isaiah's got, like, death grip on the railing whenever there's a railing to hold. Whereas I think um, for Avery, it's less fell in the river and more fell. In the river, I'm using the big old inverted. Uh, I'm using big old speech marks around there, like on, especially on like hot days. Like, oh no, I have tripped and fallen. Mm-hmm. It's like you cannot do that wearing your shoes. <laughs> but yeah, uh, maybe even as a bit, like just periodically would just do so. But yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, so there are a few uh, prompts uh, that we can use. I see these. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so for reference for listening audience, the way that these go for both child and adulthood. For childhood, it's you get sort of the description as it was in the moment, and you get a, a set of traits that you can do those questions that we just went through, and then the prompts here. They're not like 
super uh, descriptive ones, so there's a lot of room to operate around. Like for the uh, river ride here, we've got like laughing and splashing, soaking up the sun, surprise attack. So there's a, a fair amount of latitude that you can use with these. And then the adulthood ones we'll get to in a bit, but those are a little more... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I think the child ones go for like bigger emotions generally, mm -hmm. whereas the adulthood ones I think are, are a little bit more complex, but they also still tap back into that old through line of like, oh, how were things as kids? Or do we remember them as they were? So mm -hmm. I don't know, y'all. What's the vibe? How do we want to do this one? I mean, I know we talked about it in the vagary, but the day, I mean, I love that. Maybe it's just after your, uh, eponymous attempt at surfing we tried to surf excalibur it, it didn't work <laughs> yeah but maybe we're like just sitting on the side now having that maybe that's just happened lady of the lake jesus that's still sticking with me okay yeah we'll call that we'll call that lady of the lake mm -hmm. like i think um they had to like snag medi and like drag her back to one of the ladders for a bit just to get her feet back under her and maybe everyone kind of caught along as she was recovering and like as Excalibur is like obviously stranded above her um one of the one of the pages is holding it for the moment Cory I have to inform you that you are in fact anonymous dragon in the G-Doc <laughs> <laughs> that's true that's I see it that's extremely funny thank you you're welcome. But yeah, one of the situations where like she's not necessarily like um shamed per se so much as just like a little red in the face, but also looking out for the others because I think she got kinda uh lost in the world with, with trying to balance on top of this thing and, and kind of rough horsing and all that stuff. So I do think Isaiah like was like ah and like jumped off of his to try to save you, which just made it worse. Oh God, yeah. Um, and this is the page like pulled the fishes all out. He's like, we're the ones who get people, and they f do don't also jump off your floaty. God, I get that. Like, it's one of the situations where, like, camera wise, right? You can see it like what right at the water line. These two children, like one jumps in, they're both flailing around. And then suddenly the camera jumps up and it turns out both of your like waist height or maybe chest height of this this park assistant that's just dragged us both out and bodily picked us both up. Mm -hmm. And put us over into a safe spot, like a little island. Okay, okay. Yeah, they have like the little guard towers. <laughs> that are just they're just they're just like yeah, they're turrets, but they're like they're just um lifeguard like chairs yes um, yes but they're made up like like tur like guard towers heck yeah <laughs> god every everything we describe about this place i do wish it actually existed um yes no so like i think as opposed to like being concerned about like nearly taking on too much water um uh many just turns over to isaiah is like did you see that did you see what i did i saw you've nearly crack your head on the wall oh no 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 well maybe but that's not the important part i had it i had it for like two minutes i was standing on top i almost got down the entire river you know einstein said that time was relative and i think that you might think that that was longer than it was but it felt like forever like i was on it and everyone had to be seeing and i think I think they should make that part of the ride. Is the falling off part of the ride? Well, if you're bad at it. <laughs> She'll, like, reach up and grab Excalibur and thrust it over to Isaiah. Like, here, you can see it, right? It's perfect. I don't believe you. Well, you don't have to believe me, but why don't you try it out? See how you feel standing on it yeah here i'll hold it and she like <laughs> kind of does that thing where she tries to get it down into the water and hold it steady like you just hop on top like this the light grabs right there oh it's fine they're busy looking at everyone else in the river 
<sighs> I think he it still doesn't do it. He's too scared. No. Oh. Well, here, then you hold it, and I'll hop on. <sighs> <sighs> Holds it. <laughs> and in, in brazen view, uh, like, she just sort of clambers back on top. And, like, finds that sort of balance point that she had a little earlier. And just sits on it first. It's one of those things where, like, she starts to go for it. And then, like, the body kind of reacts. And she realizes, like, oh, she's pushing up to try and get standing again. And her limbs are telling her, don't do that again. That's a bad idea. (laughs) So she's kind of frozen up on top of Excalibur, like, okay, any moment now. (laughs) I think it takes her a little bit, and then she eventually just kind of slides back off. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, maybe not, like, right here, actually. Crazy. But you can see it, right? You can see how it would be. I mean, maybe. Surfing, like, the way surfing works is that the momentum keeps you pushed on the board. It's too slow like this. You need a bigger one. Ooh, so the river should be going faster, then. No. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, that could be seen. That's great. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. it's good. Um, and I think I think it cuts to the to the to the um, modern day. Yeah. Uh, and I think that there is one of those Excalibur floaties, like kind of deflated, and like caught on something in the drained moat. God, yeah. How's it looking? How's how's the river ride look now that time has passed and uh, taken its toll? Well, I mean, it's it's it cracked cement is certainly one of them. Absolutely, yeah. I think along with that, probably musty boxes of beach balls and inflatables. Hmm. I think I think a lot of the a lot of the stuff that made it look not like just a normal lazy river and normal. Um, lifeguard like um mm. chairs and stuff like the stuff they put on top of it it was not as durable as the chairs and stuff themselves so it's like a lot of the facade is kind of um mm. showing oh yeah we could see what was really inside those towers which was really mm. kind of just nothing but you know you always wondered as a kid which just normal yeah normal like pool supply like um chairs and stuff yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Now you think, um, let's say, uh, looks like, look at that. It's one of your uh, surfboards. Sort of like reaching forward and plucking it out, like half bent over. We'd have to. I think we'd have to climb down to get to it. Yeah, that's true. Like it's a whole like ladder thing. Okay, so more like a mm-hmm. stick, right? Like reaching down to. Mm-hmm. Kind of snag it, like sad, deflated, rubber kind of substance. I think uh, Medi would hold it out too. I think for this one, she would have wanted um, Avery along to see it as well. Mm-hmm. Like, I swear, if I know that I hadn't taken it home, I could have. I would have thought this was the same exact thing. I mean, I'm fairly certain they sold them. At, like, didn't you get yours? At, like that store, like I look around, like trying to geography is not my strong point. I mean, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. It was, I'm um... sure you're not the only person that bought one and brought it here. Yeah, but still, like I didn't see so many people riding like these around necessarily. I think they usually went for like the stable ones. Yeah, well, most people weren't trying to surf them. <laughs> I uh, to this day amazed and grateful that you did not bust your face open on the concrete told you well it would have been fun but yeah it's probably for the best I, isn't it mm, the emergency room is not fun no i mean the uh i don't know i think it was just like seeing everything from that high up i mean it wasn't like that much higher up i guess in the river but being on the water looking at everything from up above Everyone staring at you. Maybe that's not so fun, actually. Eh. 
Depends on the day. Yeah, I guess it does. Oh, we can do one thing that we couldn't do, though, when the river was still running. Mm. Yeah. Just take a walk down the riverbed. Sure. And, um... You know, people used to say that there was a... Some sort of sea serpent in this thing. Yeah? Yeah, I think it was just that somebody had uh, lost a pool noodle. <laughs> but, you know, uh, how uh, rumors spread. I could see that. Like, get stuck in the drain somewhere. Mm-hmm. Want to see if it's still there? I am climbing down. I have, like, <laughs> swung my leg over the railing and have sort of lowered myself down to drop into the into the bed of it. Mm. Yeah, oh man, we got, like, a hand cam and everything. Yeah, GoPro. Nice, yeah, I think uh, Betty will lower herself down, make sure that that's steady, and then get, like, a shot of Avery from behind. Mm -hmm. Come on, Isaiah, let's walk the boat. <sighs> All right. <laughs> kind of um, hops over it and slides down. You made that look far too easy. I do, um, yeah, Tai Chi. Yeah, I can oh, see the balance okay. there. Mm -hmm. The most graceful descent of a ladder I've ever seen. Yeah, you know, Kung Fu Panda really changed my life. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I like the idea that we maybe follow the river, ride along, like just traversing along this massive loop, and we pass underneath one of the bridges that go over it, and we're back in like the heyday, and we're all just like bobbing along, and we've each got an inner tube, like riding the ride as it was intended. <laughs> As opposed yeah, yeah. to, you know, otherwise. Kind of see it like overlaid as we walk and as we float. Yeah. Kind of side view. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I think that's good for the river ride. I think that's great for the river ride.